Welcome to the Chris Del Rey Network College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Anna and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Bray. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from St. Mary's University of Minnesota. Hello, um, my name is Nicole Winnegar and I'm re representing St. Mary's University of Minnesota. Um, so we are located in Winona, Minnesota, which is in southeastern Minnesota. We have a population of about 26,000 people. Um, we have three different colleges in Winona. So St. Mary's University, four-year private school, which is us. Winona State University, which is a four-year public school. And Winona State College Southeast, which is a two-year technical school. Overall, there are 11,500 students in Winona during the college session. Um, so that makes up a large chunk of the population. Um, as you can see from the photo here, we have a lot of fun outdoor recreation um, activities that students like to partake in. So they go canoeing, they go kayaking, they go hiking in the bluffs. Um, so lots of really great ways to get outside. Um, we also have many cafes around town. Um, myself personally, one of my favorites as a student was the Acoustic Cafe. I like to go there on the weekends and do a lot of my studying. We also have the Winona 7 Theater um, located downtown. We have $5 Movie Tuesdays, and we also have $6 Movies and Popcorn for students on Thursdays as well. And then we also have our Marine Art Museum, um, which is also located downtown. Um, we have artists such as Claude Monet, Vincent Van Gogh, and we have one of the George Washington Crossing the Delaware paintings, um, and that's discounted tickets for students as well. Um, if you did want to get out of Winona a little bit, then we could go to Rochester, which is two hours away. Um, they have malls, um, different theaters, things like that. Um, Rochester is about 40 minutes away, home of Mayo Clinic, and we actually do have lots of ties with them. And then La Crosse is about 30 minutes away, and we have checked. It has the closest Buffalo Wild Wings. And the, here's some photos of Winona, um, just some of the outdoor stuff that we like to do. So our student profile, so we have about 1100 undergraduate students um, and 46 to 54 male to female ratio. So it's, you don't really see much of a difference there. Um, we have 31 states and 19 different countries that are represented. Um, and we have about 17% of our students that are students of color and 28% of our students receive um, the Pell Grant. Um, for our campus life, 85% of our students do live on campus, and that is required for the first two years. After that, students tend to like to stay on campus just because of the close proximity and the variety of living options that we have. Um, we have about 40, uh, 450 acres of campus. That includes the bluffs, and in our bluffs, we have over 10 miles of trails, um, a trout stream that um, a lot of our students go fishing in, and we do biology experiments in. We have a disc golf course, and we have a cross-country skiing as well. Um, and then we are also within walking distance to many different restaurants. My personal favorite is Mango's, which is a Mexican restaurant that's right down the hill from St. Mary's. Otherwise, if you did want to um, get into town just a little bit more, the Winona Transit System takes you to Walmart, Target, or anywhere else that you'd need to buy groceries. And then in 2016, we were actually named the number one safest college town in America. Um, and that was that is a big part due to our uh, campus safety, which is available 24-7 to us. Personally, when I was a student, I never really felt unsafe. The scariest thing I found was the deer just kind of roaming around the bluffs. So we really feel safe on our campus. Um, for our athletics, we have 17 NCAA Division III sports. Um, some of our biggest um, sport teams on campus, we have hockey, soccer, and track and field. Uh, many of our students like to go to these games, just kind of you know, hang out and get together. Um, about a third of our students are student athletes, and that's big in part 
because we have um, the professors that work really closely with the coaches. So you're able to be on top of your classes while also still being able to attend games and practices. And then we have five intramural sessions with unique sport opportunities and seven different club sports as well. So if you wanted to still be a part of athletics, but not necessarily have that rig rigorous uh, schedule, that is a good option as well to stay involved. So theater and the arts. So we do have about five to six different plays and musicals per year. Four of them are specifically plays and musicals. And then we have one to two different dances. Um, and then we have four different performance spaces. Three of them are on campus. One of them is off campus. We also have a dance minor, which is pretty unique to us because we're, we are one of the few schools in the Midwest that has that dance minor. And then we have nine different choirs and bands that are on campus. Um, the World Drum Ensemble is one of our newer ones. I'm actually involved in concert band myself, even as staff. And then I'm also part of the Jazz Ensemble as well. Um, some of our other really big ones are chamber singers and their chamber orchestra. And chamber singers and our jazz combo one there, they actually do some traveling and they go back and forth between the United States and Europe. So if you did want to get involved with traveling, that is a good option for you as well. And then we do have several different talent-based scholarships. So we have music, theater, and the arts. Um, theater and art, you do have to major in those two things in order to um, in order to get those scholarships. However, if you wanted to audition for the music scholarship, you do not have to have that major. You just have to stay involved with some sort of music ensemble uh, while you are still on campus. And then we also have two different art galleries. One of them is in our student center and the other one is in our art building. So student involvement, we have over 50 clubs and organizations. Um, so those are academic, multicultural service, special interests. We have so many of them. Um, and it's really easy to start a club on campus. All you have to do is just grab a couple friends and a faculty advisor and you have a club. Uh, my friends and I, while we were students, we actually started a kickboxing club, which was really, really fun. 75% of our students um, are participating in those types of clubs in some way, shape or form. Um, some of that also includes our student activity committee and our student senate. Um, so those are our students that kind of have a voice for the rest of the student body. They put together all of our activities that we do like trivia and bingo. Um, they help make a lot of our big decisions. They um, they fund, like they distribute the budgets for clubs and things like that. So um, they're a really great way to get involved with our kind of leadership on campus. We also have campus ministry. One of my favorite things that campus ministry does every year is a soul trip. So essentially what that is, it's like a mission trip. So you pick between five different places in the United States and you go to that place during your spring break and you do mission work. So I've been in the schools, I've done um, community service. It was a really cool experience. And then we also have um, led recreation as well. So we have an outdoor leadership club that also um, brings leads hikes into the bluffs and things of that nature. So our academics, because we're a school, of course, um, we have about 40 majors with different pathways. One of our newest major is actually the nursing program. Um, and we are affiliated with Mayo Clinic. Um, so you will get some experience with them. We have 36 minors as well. It's very easy to double major, double minor, whatever you want to do while you're on campus. Um, we also have a totally revamped interdisciplinary general education program. Um, so that has been reevaluated, reassessed and redone. So that way all of our students have the best general education program that they can receive. Um, we also have our Lasallian honors program. So if you wanted to have a little extra nudge while you're at school, but also getting out of some of your general education classes, that is a good way um, for you to do that. And then our average class size is about 16 students. Um, that depends on what classes you're taking at what times. Um, I had classes that when I was further into my major had three students, including myself. Um, I also had some classes with my gen ed classes that were uh, 15, 20, 30 students. It just kind of depends on what it is that you're going to be taking. And then we also have our financial aid. So our FAFSA opens um, October 1st please file the FAFSA. Um, our financial aid letters go out mid-January, so you'll be able to hear pretty quickly um, what you would be receiving for financial aid. 
Um, and then we also have our institutional based scholarships as well. So we have a merit um, scholarship that you get based on your GPA. Um, and every student gets that as soon as they put in their application. Um, a visit scholarship, come to campus during your senior year, you get $1,000 pretty easy and that's renewable all four years as well. Um, we also have our talent-based scholarships, which, I, which I've talked about. Um, if you go to a Catholic high school, that is another um, scholarship. And then if you have any alumni or legacy, um, and then you can absolutely bring in outside scholarships. We will stack that with ours. We won't take any money away from you just because you earned it, because that's not fair. And this is where you can find us. This is some of our social media. Um, pretty easy, um, SMUMN or SMUMN Winona um, are, are pretty standard. Um, we've been really active on TikTok over this last summer. Um, so you can definitely check out the videos that we've been putting together. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Next, I'll be hearing from Beria College. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, my name is Khalil Baker. I am one of the two coordinators of minority recruitment for Berea College. Um, I graduated from Berea College in 1997. Um, my job is to unapologetically find the best and brightest black and brown students. So that's why I'm here. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Berea. My partner, um, my co-presenter couldn't be here with me today, but she'll be with me Saturday. Um, I'd like to share a little bit about the history of Brea College. Brea College was founded in 1855. We were the first college in the South to educate Blacks and whites, men and women together in the same classroom. So in defiance of slavery in the midst of women's suffrage, we were ahead of the curve. So I share that with folks to, so folks can understand when it comes to diversity, when it comes to inclusion, when it comes to feeling welcome on our campus, that's a big part of who we are and who we've been since day one, um, and that remains part of our commitment today in serving everyone, black, white, men, and women, between, in between and beyond those identities. Um, besides that being our focus and historically and currently who we are, we also work to serve um, families, students that come from families that have financial need. When I went to Berea College, my mother was a single mother working as a cashier in a gas station. As you can imagine, um, she didn't have a lot of resources as far as paying for me to go to college. Um, and then it was Berea. Berea, every student that, out, that attends Berea College, they have to be Pell Grant eligible. So they have to have financial needs. So we're looking for students we can invest in, not necessarily, or not students that we're looking to pay tuition. If you get into Berea College, every student automatically gets our no tuition promise scholarship. Our tuition is valued as about, at about $176,000 over four years. No student ever pays a penny towards tuition. It's been that way since 1895, I believe. Um, national debt of a student graduating from a four-year college or university is around 29,000. At Berea College, as you see in the slide there, 49% of our last graduating class graduated with zero debt. And of those 51% that graduated with debt, the average debt was about $5,500. So we're real big on making sure our students get great quality education, but also leave without um, taking on a, a big debt. Besides our no tuition promise, every student is assigned a work study position, which is great. It um, is a big part of our, why we're a great fit for the Chris Array um, a partnership that we have. Like Chris Array, every student um, gets to work. Every student works um, a 10 hour position and we are one of one of we are one of eight federally recognized labor colleges. And what that means is, like I said, every student gets a work study position working on campus. What we're different from the other seven is in the other seven colleges, you either get paid to work or you get um, or it counts towards the cost of your education. At Berea College, it's both. Um, every student, if they work just a minimum hours, will get paid two thousand dollars in their first year. And that creeps up a little bit as they go. Um, and then there's a lot of benefits that, that I don't even have time to get into, but um, it prepares you well for what's next. As you all know, um, being part of Chris Array, it prepares you for what's next as far as after college. 
besides um, being a well-rounded, or, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm getting caught up in my words. Um, we provide a well-rounded quality education. We're number 13 um, as far as Washington Monthly, as far as liberal arts colleges, and we make sure you get a well-rounded quality education. A couple of the highlights that I like to share from this um, slide is the average class size is 14 students. So you get an intimate experience. You get a lot of time with your professors as well as your teacher's um, assistants in the classroom and outside of the classroom. As well, it's a two to one student faculty ratio. So the faculty know you by name. You get a lot of attention from, from our teaching staff. As well, um, the, the, the ratio on campus or the percentage on campus is our African-American percentage. Um, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about our history. Our African-American percentage of students is 25% and our Hispanic Latino population is 15%. So there's a lot of inclusion as far as um, who is represented on our campuses. Just as important um, as the experience that you get in the classroom is also the experiences that you have outside of the classroom. Um, two highlights that I like to share with folks is about study abroad. On average, 10% of all students graduating from a four-year college have some sort of study abroad experience before they graduate. At Berea College, we're close to 50% of our graduating classes have some sort of education abroad experience. A big reason for that is one, because we push that experience for students, but also because we provide scholarships for our students that on average pay about 70% of what it would cost for you to have an education abroad experience, as well as our, um, our funded internships. We know the importance of internships and often with our students um, that, that are coming with financial need, we need to work our summer so we can't take the summer and just go volunteer somewhere to, to get that internship experience that often does not pay. So what we do at Berea College is we will fund up to two internships for each student that they can go to another state, they can find an internship wherever they want and get that experience and we'll pay for travel, we'll pay for things like housing, food, we'll pay their stipend and other costs that might be associated with that internship. A couple of alumni, these are some of our notable alumni. Um, two that I like to highlight, um, even if we don't know their names, we come across their work. One is Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who is considered the father of Black History Month. He graduated from Berea College, as well as Dr. Samuel Hurst. Um, everyone has pretty much has a, a, a touchscreen phone or some touchscreen technology, and he was the, the founder of the touchscreens. The last thing I'll share with you all is about the application process. It's free to apply online. It is always free. You don't need a, a waiver or anything like that. We, we recognize the, the students that we serve. So we want to get rid of all barriers that we can. And one is making sure that our application is free to everyone that wants to apply. You can see the other components there. We'll need a high school transcript. And there's a particular form that we have you send to your counselor and to a core teacher that they fill out for your evaluation and recommendation. And then we'll need your test scores if you choose to give us your test scores. Right now, we're test optional for the, for the next couple of years and we're evaluating that as we go. And then the other piece is we need your FAFSA results. Um, to qualify for Berea College, you have to be Pell eligible. Um, and so that's why we need your FAFSA results to know if you qualify financially. <coughs> um, oh, the other thing that I um, just want to make sure, sure folks, we are a highly selective school, encourage folks to get their applications done, hopefully by early to mid-November. We start our rolling um, meetings, um, decision meetings late November. By the time we leave for holiday break in December, we'll have um, accepted half of next year's incoming class. So what I see with so many folks is they procrastinate on getting their, <coughs> excuse me, procrastinate on getting their applications done. And come January, February, it's that much harder to get in because there's so fewer seats. That's it for my presentation. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Lycoming College. OK, 
Can everybody see my screen? I can see it, looks good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so first things first, uh, we are like Homing College. Uh, we were founded in 1812, so we're among one of the 50th, 50th oldest colleges in the United States. Um, we are located in Williamsport, PA. Um, with that, you know, we're, we're home to the Little League World Series. Um, we're less than four hours away from, you know, major cities such as New York City, uh, DC, Pittsburgh, and Baltimore. Um, with other things too, we have updated buildings, facilities, uh, labs, some study rooms, uh, and we also have a planetarium, which is definitely unknown for um, four-year colleges. Um, our faculty, we have 88 full-time faculty um, that hold a PhD um, or equivalent, um, and we consider ourselves uh, a very small liberal arts college. We have approximately 12, 1,200 students on campus, um, and the student ratio is 12 to 1. So with that, provides a very intimate um, relationship with your professors. Um, different types of research opportunities are available um, and there's no graduate instructors. So you really get that one-on-one -on -one time with your professors and you're kind of not just a number. Um, one thing that is very well known with our college is we're nationally ranked, um, the best 387 colleges by the Princeton Review um, and the best tier one national liberal arts sciences institution by the US News and World Report. Uh, with our education, we encourage students to think deeply and act boldly. That's kind of our motto here. Uh, we offer 43 majors and 66 minors, and students are able to tailor their education to align with their future interests and career goals, um, which I think is, is great. You know, say, for example, you're interested in biology and you want to major, double major in music, you're able to do that, um, or major in double minor in something. Um, a lot of our programs are, are designed to explore the world's most important questions. And some of these listed are one of our non-traditional um, majors that you don't necessarily find at every four-year undergraduate college or university. Um, and 100% of our students complete an enhanced academic experience. And I will get to that. Um, so what an enhanced academic experience is, it's designed to promote intellectual, professional, and personal development. Um, and this consists of internships, research, and study abroad opportunities um, in a variety of different locations, which I think is a little unheard of, um, especially considering, you know, if you're a math major and you want to study abroad, you're able to do that. Um, the Center for Enhanced Academic Experiences they facilitate um, help with internships, uh, travel, uh, even graduate schools application and res resume building. Um, and the advisors are there to really help you out. Um, typically, our students are declaring a major their second year, second semester. Um, you know, for example, say you are going in um, undeclared as a major. Uh, there's advisors there for that that could kind of help navigate you through those things um, in areas that you might be interested in, which I think is really interesting. Um, some of our student life, uh, we have 80 plus student run clubs and organizations. Um, with that, you know, if there's something on campus that you are interested in and it's not there, you're more than welcome to start that, which I think is great. Um, we all also offer Greek life, um, musical arts, theater, things like that. Uh, we also offer outdoor leadership, um, OLE, also known as OLE, uh, and that offers outdoor activities like kayaking, skiing, snowboarding, rock, and rock climbing. Um, in our recently updated building, the Crafts Building, we also have a rock climbing wall. Um, and students are more than welcome to go in there and climb the wall if they want. Um, we also offer a number of different trips, uh, which, you know, they travel to New York and, you know, different types of cities or traveling to museums. Um, and we also have uh, 19 
uh, NCAA Division Three athletic teams. Um, so whatever your sports interests are, that it, they're probably there. And um, we do have very well-known athletic teams. Uh, here are some of our college-wide events which um, we have a CAB concert, a campus carnival. Um, there's also Broadway trips to New York, um, weekend bus trips um, to a variety of different places, um, which, are, which are great. And uh, here is a little tidbit. This is our, um, our pamphlet that we have. Uh, kind of going off that too. Um, I mentioned the small classes and faculty. Uh, one thing that I think we really pride ourselves in is 100% of our students receive some sort of scholarship, financial aid, um, and you know 100% of students participate in applied learning experiences. You know, such as like I said before, study abroad, research, things like that. We have archaeology. Um, which students can study abroad for that. Um, and 95% of the class of 2020 were employed or in a graduate program within six to 12 months. Um, so our, our turnout rate is, is very, we pride ourselves in that. Um, so, and then we have a few different dates um, for fall open houses. You're more than welcome to check out the website for that. Uh, we do offer virtual tours um, and uh, virtual chats with uh, admissions counselors here at Lake Coming. Uh, so if you guys have any questions that I haven't answered, uh, feel free to contact one of our admissions counselors um, from your respective territory, and we would really be happy to chat with you. Um, and thank you so much for, for tuning in, and we hope to hear from you. Thank you. Lastly, we'll be hearing from St. Louis University. Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Tanner. I am a regional program coordinator for St. Louis University. Um, so if you live in the Kansas City area or in Kansas, I would be working with you. I'm excited to be here to tell you a little bit more about SLU. There we go. Uh, so we are a medium-sized Catholic Jesuit university. We're about 8,000 undergraduate students. Uh, we are the second oldest Jesuit university founded in 1818, uh, and we are the first university west of the Mississippi. We actually do have two campuses, one in St. Louis, Missouri in the city, and then the other in Madrid, Spain, which is a really great study abroad opportunity for our students. If you're not familiar with Jesuit education, just a little history lesson. Uh, the Jesuits are one of the largest orders of Catholic priests founded in the early 1500s by St. Ignatius of Loyola. And ever since they were founded, the Jesuit mission has always revolved around education, specifically education of the whole person through mind, body, and spirit. What that means absolute is that regardless of your major, if you are a political science major, an engineering major, a nursing major, we still want you to take some of those foundational liberal arts courses. We want you to know a little bit about everything. Another big part of being a Jesuit university and part of the Jesuit mission is this idea of being men and women with and for others. So community service is a really large part of our campus culture. Um, within the past few years, our campus community, so faculty, staff, and students, contributed over 1.98 million hours of community service. So it is something that really does dominate campus culture. We do offer just about 90 different majors for you to choose from. All of our majors are direct entry, so if you plan to apply to SLU and you know what you'd like to study, you can apply directly into that major, and if you are admissible, you start in that program your very first semester. Now, if you are still figuring out what you'd like to do, that is okay. About half of our students will start as still deciding and then figure it out uh, once they get to SLU. 
There are a few majors that you do need to know as a senior in high school if you plan to study them. That is nursing. We also offer a six-year doctorate in physical therapy and a five-year master's in occupational therapy. Um, those three majors you do need to apply for as a senior in high school, but there's a lot of flexibility within all of our other programs. We are most well known for our sciences and for the health sciences. So we have a lot of students that are interested in pre-professional health, whether that be pre-med, pre-PA, uh, pre-pharmacy. We do have our own medical school. We also have our own hospital as well. Um, we have students interested in nursing, physical therapy, um, speech pathology. And then outside of that, uh, we also have a lot of students interested in engineering, aerospace engineering, biomedical engineering, um, and then all of our business programs are very popular as well. One fun fact is that we do have a flight science program. So if you are interested in becoming a professional pilot, you can do that at St. Louis University. To switch gears a little bit and talk about the learning that you do that happens outside of the classroom um, and ways to get involved on campus. So we have about 180 different student, student organizations uh, that really run the gamut of anything that you can think of. We are division one in athletics. We have 18 uh, D1 sports. The big sports at SLU are basketball and soccer. Um, we also have 30 different club sports as well. So if you'd like to play in college, but perhaps not at the D1 level, that is still a way to continue playing um, athletic, you know, whatever your sport is competitively. We also offer intramural programs. If you're interested in Greek life, we're about 25% Greek, seven sororities and seven fraternities as well as 10 multicultural fraternities as well. That is just kind of a brief highlight of the different student organizations that we offer on campus. And you know, those are ways to get involved in extracurriculars in terms of ways to really enhance your learning. We are a very hands-on university. So we have over 300 clinical sites around the St. Louis area for our students that are in the health sciences, for our engineering students, there's a concrete lab. We have a wind tunnel. Our business students really get involved in internships. Um, we're really close to the startup hub in St. Louis. We're about a mile away from that neighborhood. Um, and we also have nine Fortune 500 companies in St. Louis as well. One more fun fact about a different way to really stretch your brain is through research. We are a research extensive university and a doctoral extensive university. All that means is you can start doing research as early as freshman or sophomore year and carry that all the way through to the PhD level if you would like. Now, if you've never been to the city of St. Louis, we are located on the eastern side of Missouri, right along the Mississippi River. Um, the city itself is about 300,000. The metropolitan area is uh, well over 2 million. So we are definitely a mid-major city. And SLU is located right in the heart of the city in the Midtown neighborhood, which is the Arts District. Um, now, even though we are in the city, still very much your traditional college campus. Uh, so you're not wandering city blocks looking for our buildings. It's very easy to tell when you are on and off campus. We're also a residential school. 93% of our freshmen live on campus. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a campus in Madrid, Spain as well. Um, classes are taught in English and in Spanish there. And while you can spend all four years in Madrid and get a degree from St. Louis University without ever stepping foot in St. Louis, the most popular option is going to be a traditional semester abroad. We also offer 45 other study abroad locations with other partners all around the world scholarships, tuition, financial assistance, all of that stays the same if you do choose to study abroad. If you are thinking of applying to St. Louis University, it is free to apply. We are a member of the Common Application and we also have an application on our website as well. Um, either way, it is free. Now, um, we do require your transcripts, but we are test optional. Uh, so we do not require test scores, either ACT or SAT, to be considered for any of our scholarships or academic programs, which is fantastic. We do recommend that you submit two letters of recommendation and a resume and do an informal admission interview, but this is really just a way to get to know you better and help you through the admission process. One thing to note is that this is our first year um, using 
early decision, early action, and regular decision and mission timelines. Um, I won't go into too much detail just for time's sake, but know that early decision is a binding agreement. Early action means you apply early and find out early, and then regular decision, um, at least at SLU, will be as space is available on a rolling basis. Now, when you apply to SLU, your application to the university is also your application for our merit scholarships. These range anywhere from $10,000 to uh, $25,000 a year, and you'll find out with your admission decision what merit scholarships you are eligible for. One great thing that we do offer for all students who have attended a Krista Ray High School is our Krista Ray Scholarship. Now, there's nothing that you need to do for this other than just select that you attend a Krista Ray High School on your application, and then you automatically receive an additional $5,000 a year that stacks on your other merit scholarships. We do offer two different competitive scholarships. Both of these require a separate application and a potential interview process. Outside of that, we do offer need-based financial aid as well. So I will echo what other people have said. And definitely if you're a senior, the FAFSA filing opens on October 1st and we strongly encourage you to submit the FAFSA. 98% uh, of our students receive assistance from us and our overall aid package this past year was just under $31,000. So um, if you take, take anything away from this session, it's to send the FAFSA to any and all schools that you have applied to or plan to apply to. If you do have any questions, I'm happy to answer them in the chat. Um, I will also put my contact information in the chat as well. Um, and you can find, if you're looking for someone who's directly in your state, you can always find who your admission counselor is on the Find My Counselor page on SLU's website. Thank you so much for, for listening to me talk. Thank you. So I just wanted to invite all of the reps to come back on for a quick round of Q&A um, so everyone can come back with their cameras. Um, and I will just ask you to share in the same order that you presented in, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So we'll start with St. Mary's University of Minnesota. Yeah, so I would, the advice that I would give is just be really open-minded about the schools that you're looking at and look at a large variety of schools. Um, I just recently graduated from college, so I am not far away from where you guys are at right now. Um, so what I did was I applied to public schools, private schools. I was looking out of state, in state. I looked everywhere, and I think that was really helpful for me to um, find what was a good fit for me and then visiting the schools as well was also really helpful for finding uh, my college home. The, the two things I would say is one, um, Nicole just said, is visiting, um, visiting the college campuses. That is so important if you can make that happen. The other thing I would say is making sure you keep regular contact with your admissions counselor, them knowing that you really want to be at that school can make a difference sometimes, um, but it also gives you a chance to communicate more about yourself in those ongoing communications that you have with the counselors. Uh, yeah, what, what I would say is just that, um, you know, make sure the school that you're looking at and you end up going to is one that you really want to go to. Because I know in my experience, you know, both of my parents went to Penn State. They wanted me to go to Penn State, but it just wouldn't, it wouldn't work for me. So make sure that the school is a good fit for you. I will echo lastly, definitely get in touch with your admission counselor. We are absolutely the experts for the schools that you're considering. And so we are happy to help. And to add on to visiting, um, especially depending on where you are in your search, or even if you are a senior, and maybe you want to visit one of these schools, but maybe we're a little bit far away, um, and you haven't done any college visits, I'd recommend starting in your own um, in your own town, in your own city, or within an hour view, you can probably get a pretty wide variety of public, private, big, small, urban, rural, to even see what style of campus you like, even if it's a school that you may not ultimately attend, just to make sure that you are looking at schools that are going to be the right vibe for you. Great, thank you. 
Um, and then I'll ask another question. Um, what, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? So we can go in the same order again. Yeah, so one thing I would like you all to remember is um, our new programs that we have. Um, I mentioned in my presentation that we have our nursing program um, and our affiliation with Mayo Clinic. Um, we do have direct involvement with them. Um, so we also have what's called the three plus two program. You do three years of undergrad and two years over at Mayo Clinic and then you get um, a physician's assistant degree um, and the master's degree there. Um, so you do get direct contact with Mayo Clinic and you also get um, that one-on-one -on -one experience. The, the one thing I would say is um, our no tuition promise. Um, every student that attends Berea College automatically gets a full tuition scholarship. Um, besides getting a, a high quality education, we are making sure that our students either graduate as close to debt free as possible or debt free. Uh, what, what I would say about live homing would be um, that, you know, the, the experiences you're getting early with us, um, you know, you're in labs doing research with your professors in your freshman year, your first semester. So you're really getting hands on research uh, experience and um, you know, that maybe some other undergraduate programs might not offer. So I think that's something to remember about us. The great thing about St. Louis University is that if you attend here, you are not just joining the SLU community, you're also joining the Jesuit community. We are one of 27 in the United States, and we do have reciprocity with other career centers. So let's say you come to SLU for college and then you move back to your hometown, which also has a Jesuit school. You can use their university and use their career center to help you figure out what your next step is, which is something that's really fantastic about being a small part of a large network. Hey, and then lastly, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Um, one myth about to debunk about the college admission process. Um, I think one of the things that a lot of students think is that the test scores are absolutely utmost importance, but really a lot of schools are not even looking at them anymore. Um, for St. Mary's, we are test optional. Um, only specific programs really require it at this point, and it's mostly just to see like where your math scores are at and stuff. So, um, Really, I think that's one thing to just keep in mind is that we're not looking at just your tests. We're looking at um, a, if you took a wide variety of classes, what you've done in high school and like the activities that you've been involved in and things of that nature. Um, the only myth that I can come up with is that you don't have right to be choosy. Um, a lot of students seem to feel it's about if someone can offer you enough money or offer you the programs um, that, that you want. And if they don't have everything you want up front, that you just have to take what you get. You all have the choice, all the choices that you want. You all have done the work. You can go wherever you want. And even if a school presents something to you that's not enough, you can ask for more. Right, yeah, just a little bit more uh, on that. Um, you know, what I think a big myth is like, you know, the whole uh, sticker price concept, you know, not a lot of students pay that really high number that you'll see. Um, so just keep that in mind that, you know, you're probably gonna be paying a lot less than what your school costs. And lastly, I will just say that not all schools may be as selective as they appear. I know numbers on the internet can look daunting. And of course you do have those highly selective institutions that everyone knows. Um, but I would say if you think that you have a chance at a school, or even if you think it's a reach, go ahead and apply. Um, they may not be as selective as they appear on the internet. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you everyone for sharing. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey, and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back at the schedule and sign up for more sessions and you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session's recordings at strivescan.com slash Christo Ray. So thank you all for joining us tonight. 
Um, have a good rest of your evening. Bye now.